So that's the center of mass in one dimension. What happens if we have masses in more than one dimension? Say, two. Well, the way we handle this is, as usual, we separate the directions. We deal with x, and we deal with y, and we deal with them separately. So let's think about this example of a sulfur dioxide molecule. The sulfur dioxide molecule consists of two oxygen atoms and one sulfur. And in the problem, we see that a sulfur atom is twice as massive as an oxygen atom. Now, we don't have any masses given in the problem, but that's okay. We'll apply our usual trick and say the oxygen has mass m, we'll assign a, val a variable to it, and our sulfur atom will therefore have mass 2m. And to solve the problem, we will separate the directions. So we'll deal with the directions one at a time, say deal with x first. Now the value we need is the x location of the oxygen atom on the left. And we would multiply it by the mass of the oxygen atom over the total mass. And then we will repeat this for the second oxygen and for the sulfur. But before we go and do that, let's clean this up a little bit. Now the total mass is going to be m, m, 2m, so a total of 4m. Now we need the x location of this particular oxygen atom. We know that this distance is 0 0.143 nanometers and that this angle is 60 degrees. We want how far is it in x or this distance here. For this, we can use trigonometry. So this distance is our XOL, as I've been calling it. So if we look at our triangle, the sine of 60 degrees is going to be this XOL divided by 0 0.143 nanometers, which means that XOL is going to be 0 0.143 nanometers sine of 60 degrees, which when I plug that into a calculator, I get 0 0.124 nanometers. Is this the value we want, however? No. If we go and look at our picture again, we see that the position of this oxygen atom on the left is in fact negative. My calculator will never give me that. I have to just look at my picture and know to put the negative sign in my calculation. So now returning to my center of mass calculation, we've got that the x center of mass the value, we've now calculated it as negative 1, 2, 4 nanometers. And the weight is going to be the mass of the oxygen atom, which we call m, divided by 4m. And we see that the m's cancel. We then move on to repeat this process with, say, the sulfur atom. For the sulfur atom, the value, the location of the atom, is at x equals 0 nanometers because it's at the origin. The weight is 2m over the total 4m. And again, we see that the masses m cancel. Finally, we would move on to our oxygen atom on the right. If this distance is 0.124, then this distance going to be 0.124. So we're going to be left with 0 0.124 nanometers. And again, the weight is going to be the mass of the oxygen atom m over the total mass 4m. 
and we see that the M's again cancel. Now, the middle quantity is nicely zero because of this zero here, which leaves us with an X center of mass of minus 0 0.124 nanometers over four plus 0 0.124 nanometers over four, which I don't even need to put that into a calculator. I can see that that adds to zero, which means that the center of mass in the X direction of our molecule is at X equals zero. Or we know that the center of mass of this molecule lies along this line. We don't know where along this line yet because we haven't calculated Y. We've only looked at X, but we know it's gonna be somewhere along the line x equals zero. Now a useful shortcut for solving these problems is to look for the symmetries. We could have actually probably seen this without actually doing the calculation because we can see that there is a mass some distance to the right of x equals zero and the same mass to the left of x equals zero. So the average of these two is going to be x equals zero. This looking for shortcuts in the symmetry of the problem is a nice way to speed up these calculations. So now we've calculated the X position of the center of mass of this object. What about the Y? So as usual, we're separating our directions. So now we're only looking at the Y. So if we look at the Y center of mass, we'll again start with this oxygen on the left. So the center of mass in Y will be the value for the oxygen on the left multiplied by the weight, where the weight is again based upon the mass. So in this case, M over the total mass for M and these M's cancel. And then we will repeat the calculation for the other two atoms. As before, let's sort of clean this up before we get all into the other atoms. So now we're looking for this distance here. And I go and I draw my triangle again, and we see that YOL, as I've called it, can be determined from cosine of 60 degrees is gonna be YOL, adjacent over the hypotenuse, 0 0.143 nanometers. Which means YOL is going to be 0 0.143 nanometers cosine of 60 degrees, which when I plug that into my calculator, gives me a Y position of the oxygen on the left of being 0 0.0 seven, two nanometers. So my center of mass calculation for this oxygen on the left that I've circled in black is going to be 0 0.072 nanometers multiplied by the weight of one over four. Then I will move on to my sulfur atom. The sulfur atom has a Y position of zero because it's located at the origin and a weight of 2M over 4M. So again, the M's cancel. Finally, we move on to this oxygen on the right that I've circled in red. We can see that the Y position of this oxygen is gonna be the same as the other one. So 0 0.072 nanometers and the weight is going to be M over 4M. And again, the M's cancel. Similar to before, but not always true, we have a zero here. So this whole term goes to zero, leaving us with a Y center of mass of 0 0.072 nanometers over four plus 0 0.072 nanometers over four, over four. In this case, 
both are positive, and so they add as opposed to cancel like last time, and we are left with a vertical position of 0 0.03 six nanometers. Which if we come up here and try to draw on our picture, we know that this is 0 0.072, 0 0.036 is roughly half of that. So our center of mass is going to be somewhere along this Y line. And the spot where the two cross is where our center of mass is going to be. So our full center of mass, we could write as a coordinate pair, x cm, y cm of 0, 0 0.036 meters. And that will be the center of mass of this sulfur dioxide molecule. So that's how we calculate the center of mass for objects that are a collection of point particles.